True Fairy Stories The Red Shoes There once was a little girl whose name was Catherine. She had a kind father and mother, a new baby brother, and dolls, and pictures, and a garden, and a hat with a big feather. She had everything she wanted except red shoes. There was no good reason why she should want red shoes more than brown or blue or green or pink shoes, but that was Catherine's way of thinking, and red shoes seemed to her the one and only things to be desired. She thought about them while she played with her dolls, and while she dug in the garden, and while she made patty cakes in the kitchen. Now Catherine's mother liked plain things best, and she felt that the feather in the child's hat was as much as she ought to expect. So whenever they went for new shoes, her mother always said, Black shoes, please. Yes, plain shoes that will wear a long time. Then the shoemaker would bring out a pair of sober black shoes, stout and strong, and lace them on Catherine's little feet. And all the while she would be longing for shoes that buttoned, shoes of brightest, gayest red that might even have a bow of ribbon at the top. Then she would look darkly at her dangling black feet and think of what might have been. Being a dear little girl and always remembering the feather in her hat, she said nothing to tease her mother but went quietly out of the shop and skipped gaily along the street. For in truth, one can skip quite as well in sober black shoes as in gay red ones. And now comes the part of my story about a fairy godmother, which is, of course, the nicest part of all. Yet, if you think it was a fairy godmother who wore spangled skirts and carried a wand and rode on clouds, you are much mistaken for this one was very different. She came to the door in a streetcar, like anybody else, and was generally dressed in grey. If it happened to be raining, she carried an umbrella and wore rubbers, and Catherine's father and mother did not call her by any of the great names one always gives to fairies, but just Kate. Catherine called her Toussaint Tate, because she could not speak more plainly. This person was a fairy godmother because she made things happen. It was she who once made the circus a beautiful reality instead of a disappointing dream. It was she who made Catherine's party a great success by sending ice cream. And when a long-planned picnic was spoiled by a thunderstorm, the fairy godmother changed all into a soap bubble party and everybody was happy. Just here begins the real story of the shoes. The fairy godmother had come to lunch one day, and at the table Catherine's mother said, Kate, do you think you could take Catherine downtown this afternoon to get a pair of shoes? Catherine listened intently. She thought of the beautiful red shoes once more. Most certainly I can go, said the godmother. I want her to have black shoes, please, perfectly plain and made to wear a long time the mother explained. Catherine's heart sank once more, and she gloomily ate a whole piece of bread, unbuttered. When they started out, however, she was skipping and holding very tightly to the godmother's hand. They stopped to look at the horse chestnut buds and the sparrows on the fences and the pansy beds in the dooryards. But by and by, they reached the shops. In at the shoemaker's window, they looked to see the big and little shoes together, and as they stood, the fairy godmother happened to see that Catherine's eyes were turned wistfully toward a pair of red shoes. Yet, being a wise fairy, she said nothing, and they walked in together. The usual black shoes were brought out of their box, tried on, and laced up on the little feet. Then, said the fairy godmother, as quietly as though asking for buttons or strings, we should like to look at some red shoes, please. 